Machine Language Manager cartridge by Bitfiddlers, released in 1982 for the Ballet Arcade Astrocade. Video Part 1 Overview and Background. This is a 2K cartridge for the Ballet Arcade, released in 1978. It was originally going to be upgraded to a computer, and there isn't much available for it that allows it to be used in that manner, but this cartridge is one of those ways. This is the machine language manager in use. Uh, you're not going to understand how it works. You're not going to understand what's going on, probably, unless you have previous experience with a machine language monitor on another computer or even maybe assembly language. By the end of this series of videos, you're going to know what's going on in this and you'll be able to use the machine language manager yourself. This video was going to originally be just one video, which was going to be, I thought at the beginning, about a half an hour long, showing you how to use the machine language manager on the Astrocade. Well, as time progressed, the video became longer and longer until it was way longer than something I could use for YouTube. So I decided to cut the video into at least three parts. I'm still not done with the parts after this one, uh, but this first part is going to have an overview and background of the machine language manager for the Astrocade. The second part is going to have how to use it. The third part and maybe last part is uh, example programs for the machine language manager. If I make a fourth part, which I'm not sure I'm going to do quite yet, it's going to be on how to use the machine language manager using the Astrocade emulator that is included with MAME. This includes actually making a keypad overlay for a regular keyboard, which can be used very easily. So sit back, watch the video. If uh, you have time um, and you're in interested, watch this first one. If you just want to jump in and learn how to use the Machine Language Manager, uh, then watch the second video. I think this first video has a lot of background information that you will find interesting, so you might want to come back to it. I'm not sure. The third video is going to include example programs that run under the Machine Language Manager. Those example programs might be of most interest to people who don't really care what the Machine Language Manager is capable of doing and how to use it, and they don't want to know how to program a machine language. But there's uh, five programs that are going to be shown. They're a program that moves uh, graphics around quickly. Uh, it's called Critter. Um, another one that creates a standard color bar generator, one that shows 256 colors on the screen. The most interesting one to users only of the Astrocade and who really don't care about how the system works would be the Goldfish demo, which was originally released on tape and shows seven goldfish swimming around inside of a fish tank. That program is pretty neat to watch and is a great example of what can be done under the Machine Language Manager. Welcome to the first video and I hope you enjoy it. In this video, I am going to be reviewing the Machine Language Manager cartridge for the Ballet Astrocade. It has a keypad overlay, the cartridge goes in a slot like normal, and it has an interface that uses the Bally Basic 300 baht interface to save and load programs. This is a close-up of the Astrocade. You're probably familiar with the way it looks here without a cartridge in and without a keypad overlay. You may be used to seeing an Astrocade cartridge in there, Bally Basic, that uses an overlay. This is going to turn it up um, from 24 keys also uh, into a uh, regular keyboard, and I say regular, but meaning uh, a 24 key keypad that allows you to talk the entire alphabet and um, go to commands and other basic commands. Um, it, I think up to four um, things can be done with each button, but um, the overlay for Machine Language Manager is much simpler than that. Let's uh, switch that out and put that one in. All right. And uh, I'm really uh, pleased at how nice of a job that was done with this uh, overlay. It looks great. So ooh, this cartridge uses a third party case, so it's a little harder to get in there. This is a close up of the Machine Language Manager cartridge plugged into the Astrocade with a, a close up also of the keypad overlay. The numbers 0 through 9 are available, and plus the hexadecimal letters A through F are available. Um, you've got a couple of other things you can use, and, that, and then that's it. 
So you've got, what, 15, or excuse me, 16 characters for the hex. And then you have a call, register, list, insert, read, address, and write. And you've got this little asterisk here, or the sometimes called star or splat if you're a Linux user, sometimes people call it that. This is kind of the equivalent of a shift. It only, I think you can only shift a few things. But you, in order to load or save from tape, you would do uh, the shift and read, which is kind of the equivalent of input and shift and uh, write, to, um, is, which is kind of the sort of uh, the print. So if you're saving to like a file, like a tape, which of course now would probably be using um, a phone or a computer, if you were saving to that, then you would uh, you would use the, um, the asterisk. This is an extreme close-up of the keypad. Uh, I just wanted to show um, the quality of it. And I really think that this makes the program easy to use. The Machine Language Manager cartridge is uh, simply a machine language monitor. If you're not familiar with what that means, I'll try to explain it in this video. I'm not going to be teaching machine language here or anything. And I'm just a casual user of it myself. But I do think this is uh, a cartridge for the system that uh, if it had come out a couple years earlier, might have made people write more machine language code because it doesn't require extra memory, uh, although it can use it. And because uh, programming in machine language through Bally Basic or Astro Basic is possible, but it is a headache inducing experience. And this way makes it a little easier. You still have to write all your code on paper, um, but you can input it in hex, which saves a lot of time. Um, and you uh, can then load it and uh, even make auto loading programs and stuff like that. You are looking at one of the most boring screens available for any cartridge that's on the Bally Arcade, also known as the Astrocade. This is what you are shown when you first start up Machine Language Manager. Maybe you're looking at this video because what is Machine Language Manager? It doesn't sound too fun. It doesn't look too fun. I have no idea how to use it. Maybe you've discovered that it's on one of your multi-carts that you have for the Astrocade. Or maybe you came across it when you're using one of the Astrocade emulators, Mess or MAME. Well, I'm here to try to uh, steer you through the manual, which is quite lengthy. Um, this video is not aimed at machine language programmers. It is aimed at someone who's probably never used machine language in their life. However, if you do know some machine language, then you might get a little more out of it. But um, the machine language manager manual is meant for someone who doesn't really know much about the uh, the Z80, uh, and maybe has some experience in BASIC, but, you know, if you were to open up the, to page one of the manual and uh, work your way through it, you might be able to uh, learn a little bit of something about the Astrocade and also how to use this cartridge. That is my goal here, is to show you some of that stuff. I'm going to uh, show you what comes with the system when you buy it, and let's get away from this screen because it sure isn't fun to look at, is it? Um, by the end of this video, you should know a little bit more about how this works and uh, maybe even be able to use this cartridge. I hope you enjoy the video and it took some work to get this all together, but uh, hopefully you will uh, get something out of it. I know I really enjoyed putting it together. The Machine Language Manager cartridge was first announced, as far as I can tell, in the Arcadian newsletter in the December. 7 in the December 7th, 1981 issue, Bob writes, Machine code programming is feasible using Bally Basic, but going through some relatively inefficient ways to input required data, segments of which have appeared in the Arcadian over the past three years. This has been resolved by the bit fiddlers who announced the availability of a new cartridge that will do all the work for you. The cartridge is intended to be a tool for the serious programmer and hardware type, a hacker, uh, a certain amount of familiarity with codes and micro microprocessor manuals, etc., would allow a user to work with it almost immediately. The manual supplied with it is an attempt to bridge some of the gap between the novice and the experienced machine language type, but it is not meant to take the place of a Z80 programming handbook. You'll need other materials. In order to get a reasonable listing on the TV screen, the Machine Language Manager uses its own 3x5 character set, very similar to the one used in Extended Basic. 
This smaller set places 39 characters on a line, but eats up a lot of memory in the unit. What is left is support of a printer and external keyboard through the cassette interface and the ability to produce self-starting program tapes. Also in the same issue of the Arcadian, there's the first ad for this uh, MLM cartridge. It's a quarter of a page ad. I've blown it up here so you can check it out. And it says Z80 machine language. That's right, a new cartridge for programming the Valley Arcade entirely in machine language. Now you can get fast graphics, better animation, four colors instead of two, more efficient memory usage, the capability to produce cartridge quality programs and tapes. You get all of this for $54.95. What isn't, isn't what isn't included is the 300 baud interface. Now, because I was curious, about what uh, this would have cost compared to now. In December 1981, $54.95 is comparable to about $147.31 here in uh, the summer of 2018. Now, I sometimes don't trust um, what that would mean. Um, I mean, is that accurate? How, do you, how can you really tell? So what I'd like to know is, uh, I'd like to know what minimum wage is back in 1981, which was $3.35 and minimum wage currently is $7.25. That means you would actually uh, be able to get a little cheaper back then if you worked a minimum wage job. Uh, back in 1981, you would have to work about 16 hours in order to purchase this cartridge at minimum wage. Today, you'd have to work about 20 hours uh, at minimum wage to purchase this cartridge. This is what the cartridge looks like for the Astrocade. It's got a silver label, and it's got a little fellow who looks like he's kind of a gnome to me, the way he's wearing some shoes and that beard and the cap. He's typing with just two fingers, and that's about how I would have been typing in about that time period too. Now, um, well, I guess you don't really have a choice if you're using the Astrocade, do you? Because it just has the 24 key keypad, and um, at best I usually just use one finger, not two. Sometimes I use two, but that's maybe uh, to shift, but uh, it doesn't save too much time, so mostly I'm using my index finger. The MLM cartridge does include a overlay for the 24 key keypad, as you can see here. Um, it's in color. I'll talk about it a little bit more later in detail. I've already shot some video that shows how this program works and what it looks like when it's over the keypad and stuff like that, so I'm not going to go into it much here. You may have noticed while you were staring at the uh, screen for the Machine Language Manager that um, it has a smaller font. I've already talked about it, that it does. But here I've made a comparison between the Bally Arcade uh, running Astro Basic and it also running the uh, Machine Language Manager. Uh, as you can see, this uh, it's much smaller, the font. On the left-hand side, you've got Astro Basic. The Astro Basics screen resolution is 160 by 102 pixels, which is pretty low res. Um, but the Astrocade in Astro Basic manages to get 26 characters and 11 lines of text in the screen, which is two, 286 characters on screen at one time. And in comparison, the MLM has 39 characters per line and 15 lines of text. And that's for a total of 585 characters on a line or on screen at one time, which is pretty darn good. Um, it's not as easy to read, but uh, Considering how much more you get to see, uh, especially when programming a machine language, it's quite useful. This is the first ad for the Machine Language Manager, or at least the first full page ad that I'm aware of. This appeared in the Arcadian on page 63 of the April 1982 issue. It kind of describes what the Machine Language Manager can do, and I think it does a good job of it, so I want to actually read some of this. Uh, what it is, it, it compares the, well, I'll just read it outright. Many of today's personal computers, and in fact, many business computers, have inside them the same uh, CPU, which in the uh, Astrocade's case is a Z80. It's a great processor, um, but it didn't really catch on in the United States as much as it did, uh, it seemed like, in Europe. Um, the ColecoVision had one, um, but it really seemed to catch on, especially in England, where the uh, ZX Spectrum used it heavily. Um, what the Machine Language Manager does is allow greater control of graphics and input-output functions uh, than BASIC allows. 
uh, and that's accurate uh, but you can program in machine language from basic it's just very awkward um, so what this is saying here is that you can create more sophisticated programs easier basically uh, the machine language manager works with the arcades keypad as I already showed you the overlay um, but instead of entering basic statements you enter uh, commands in in hexadecimal what what it means by that though is you enter the opcodes in a hexadecimal so this is not a com or it's, this is not an assembler you can't take source code and then um, assemble it into opcodes um, what this can allow you to do is create edit list run or store machine language programs on a cassette tape at the push of a button and as I have to emphasize this uh, cartridge uses the 300 baud interface however I've been using it over the past few days and it works pretty good and programs actually save rather quickly because at least in my case the programs are pretty small and what you need to work with it is you need to know Z80 although I really do think and I've, I'll mention this a few times throughout this video that you can get started just by with using the manual I mean you do need some other books and things like that once you get going but there's some examples that you can use just to type in that are in the really really well done manual and um, you even if you don't understand the Z80 from the start you'll understand how to use the machine language manager and that can be a big task in itself and you don't need to have any RAM expansion to use this although it is helpful and what is provided by the bit fiddlers is the keypad overlay in a 96 page manual which actually includes uh, the uh, source code for this program the machine language manager did seem to generate some excitement in the astrocade community in the beginning it didn't seem to catch on very much although the person who wrote the program Andy Guevara did kind of give it support by writing some columns um, in, in the newsletter over the next year or so or maybe next two years but they were far uh, and few between so uh, it's mostly you had to learn by yourself if you pick this up but the first review um, came out in the December 24th 1981 issue and is written by Bob Fabris and Al Arethmel <clears throat> they have uh, good things to say about it and I think if you enjoy uh, the, using this program you might want to read what they have to say Al is mostly positive about the program he does say that it's uh, you do need to have a working knowledge of Z to get started but of course if you're using a machine language monitor like this MLM then that kind of goes with the territory the second review appeared in the January 1982 issue and this one is written by Tom Wood who is uh, I think he wrote some machine language subroutines and he disassembled some um, game ROMs and stuff like that that are available on ballyalley.com he also wrote a book of I think it's called the executive software and it um, tells you how to access the machine language subroutines in the Bally Arcade from basic so this was right up his alley <clears throat> he has uh, some pretty good things to say about the program he says um, ever wished for really fast graphics or control of the screen for full use of the 256 color capability and basically he says if you have then this cartridge is for you and I agree you'll notice that I'm kind of contradicting myself here because the ad for the MLM says that you get four colors instead of two and that's accurate to a degree um, you can split the screen in half and uh, just like in basic so in basic you can actually get um, four colors not just two and so using the machine language monitor and not anything else you can get um, up to eight colors on the screen without any tricks although there's actually a program included in the manual for this program that shows you how to get up to 256 colors on the screen using machine language shortcuts the one downside that Tom Wood notes here is that uh, you can really mess up your program if you're not careful using the insert key and I noticed this myself you really have to pay attention to where your program um, ends you have to do it well you don't have to do it manually but to use the insert you have to pay very close attention to where it is and you can change where it ends so if you don't do it right and I tried this through experimentation you will screw up your program that you've typed in luckily I was just using short programs you might get used to this in the long run but uh, it's not easy to use it be seems like it should be a little simpler as has been mentioned already 
this 300 baud interface that was originally released for use with Bally Basic is required uh, to use the MLM. Now, technically it's not required. There is actually uh, some information in that was sent out to users later on that showed them how to pop out the MLM cartridge and insert the Astro Basic cartridge and save using the 2000 baud interface. It's pretty awkward. I haven't even tried it because it's I think it's awkward, um, and my programs have been short enough that the 300 baud interface works just fine for me. Um, but it's good to keep in mind that you can't use this cartridge without it. Not easily, anyway. You can use it with the Astro Basic cartridge, but that's up to you if you can use it. This next picture is just showing the um, 300 baud interface along with the Bally Basic uh, game program that came with it. Um, that included several programs like um, the electronic doily, just example programs. You won't need that, um, but uh, this is what you would have gotten if you had, had got the 300 baud interface at the time. And in fact, I'm not sure how widely available this was once the Astrocade was released uh, with the uh, Astro Basic cartridge. It might have gotten hard to find. It's certainly hard to find now. And since uh, people seem to have trouble using that 300 baud interface, usually because they don't hook it up right, I'm going to include a picture here of how it's to be done. Uh, the Bally Basic software uh, that was released with the uh, 300 baud interface actually included um, in this little uh, cassette insert here, uh, this picture. And this picture shows the audio cassette interface hookup and it plugs into port three. Now looking at the back of this Astrocade picture, you can see it's showing port three is all the way to the um, left. So port numbers, for looking at the back of the Astrocade, are numbered starting from the right. One, two, four, three. Why they did that, I don't know. I've mentioned this a few times. It confuses people. It confuses me even. Um, let's see, and that's, a, that's about it. That's how the uh, you would use the 300 baud interface with your uh, MLM cartridge. If you decide to, you can actually play around with it and not save just like you can in uh, Bally Basic. But, you know... If you're going through and trying to learn machine language, you're probably not going to be using this anyway. Although the reason I'm making this video is because I have been using it lately because it's useful to be able to use real hardware and just not have to like set up a cartridge and run it under emulation or whatever. Like I can write programs that are just a few bytes long, type them in quicker uh, and op using opcodes than I can actually typing in the source, assembling it and uh, using it under emulation. And this last picture here, this is very interesting. This is actually the MLM cartridge and it has been upgraded to work in an Astrocade that is running in high res mode. So instead of running in 160 by 102, it's running in 320 by 204 um, pixels. And you can see he changed the font. This was done by Michael Matt. This uh, program isn't available, but he sent me a picture recently say six months ago and this is uh, summer of 2018 so this is what it looks like if uh, you run it on the one uh, high-res system that I'm aware of all right let's get on with it let's uh, see some more about the machine language manager cartridge this is what the machine language manager cartridge originally shipped with for the Astrocade it came with the cartridge which has a silver label and is highly reflective so it looks really strange in uh, scans. Um, I don't know if anyone else owns one of these. I'm sure someone else must. Uh, the reason I'm making this video um, is to show people how to use this. Uh, the cartridge is on, I think, every single um, multi-cart that's available for the Astrocade. This is the overlay, as I was showing earlier. It's uh, quite nice. It's um, just as nice as the uh, one that's made for the uh, Bally Basic. And uh, there's some other overlays that was made for some third-party software, and they're usually just paper. Um, so this is plastic. Um, nice. Um, finally, the manual. The manual is top quality. I don't know if it originally came in this plastic cover, but um, it's, it's quite thick. I mean, it's, it, it, it's, uh, it looks like there's extra stuff in here, but... Uh, This manual is from the Bob Fabris collection, and as I was just flipping through it a moment ago, I realized there's more to this than I thought. I have had a copy of this manual for quite a few years, 
and I didn't realize, I mean, I, everything I have here I knew that was, uh, it's online available at Valley Alley, but I didn't, I didn't know some of this, uh, and I, it's really nice, this is a nice, uh, nice cardboard manual here. I'll try to flip through and show you some of the interesting uh, details. So you've got your inside cover page, you've got your table of contents, there's um, a lot here. If you don't know machine language, um, even if this is your first introduction to it, you could probably get up and running and at least typing in the machine language programs just with this manual. And while it looks really thick, and it is really thick, um, most of this is actually starting here. So I'd say there's hmm, maybe 30 pages that explain how to use it, and that's this. And then afterward, there is the complete source listing of the um, program. This uh, was written in 1981. I think it's shipped toward the, uh, the autumn, December era of 81. And uh, it was written by Andy Guevara of BitFiddlers. And he decided to uh, send the, all the users who bought this program the, uh, the complete source code, which is uh, very useful because as you're learning assembly, you can go through this and you can actually use some of his routines and call them, which is what some of the programs do that are included as uh, source code that you can run. Um, yeah, so we'll get more into this later. I'm gonna show you some of the other pieces of uh, documentation that came with it. So what is some of this other documentation that comes with the uh, manual? And it was sent later out to users who I guess purchased it. This one here is just a few pages. It is a letter um, from Andy Guevara um, stating it's from April 1982. And he's saying that he's well aware that uh, the Astro Basic, the new one, has a um, 2000 baud interface in it. And he's written some um, instructions here on how you can actually take out the machine language manager cartridge and replace it with the Valley Basic cartridge that has the built-in 2000 baud interface and save that way. I've actually not done this myself. It seems, it doesn't seem too hard to do. It's just, um, your programs aren't very big. So when you're saving at 300 baud, it doesn't take long to save anyway. Um, especially some of these uh, programs here. I think you um, only have a few hundred bytes of code uh, or a RAM to work with when you're uh, using the Machine Language Manager, but I, it would work with if you have an expansion RAM. Um, but if that's the case, and if you had like a blue RAM expansion, you probably would want to be using something else anyway. Um, like maybe the uh, blue RAM utility to program with. And there was even a, an assembler available for the Astrocade if you had a, uh, um, an expansion RAM, but I've not used it myself. So that's this, this is just a letter. That's what this is uh, included here. Uh, I want to say that I probably will try it. I know that uh, flipping or exchanging cartridges on the Astrocade uh, works. I've done it before many times, uh, but I just never used it with this one. The last piece of uh, documentation here would have probably come with the uh, Goldfish demo that you could buy for about $6 in about, I think, 1982. And uh, what it was, was a little demonstration software that showed uh, how you can move a whole bunch of objects on the screen at once. I think there were seven fish that move and it used a whole bunch of the uh, built-in routines that are built into the Astrocade's ROM. And this is the soft source code for it. Uh, this actually would work, I guess, if you um, were to type in the uh, all the hexadecimal numbers and into your arcade, but I'm... Um, I've not done that. There's a version of this that you can just load directly into the arcade, uh, into the Machine Language Manager, or uh, Lance Squire has also made this, since the source code is available, he's made it so you could run this as a cartridge. Um, it is interesting to just check out um, the source code here. It's, uh, I'm going to show probably some of this in a little more detail a little bit later. I just wanted to uh, get you familiar with the documentation that comes with it. If you're familiar with uh, Machine Language, you'd get this. If you're not, it's going to look like um, some other well, it is another language, I guess, technically. Um, and it, it's really great that he sent this off uh, so users could use it. So up next, I'm going to be showing you um, what the Machine Language Manager looks like. Before I get into what the game, uh, the cartridge looks like, I did want to show you a compilation of material that I uh, made on a uh, printouts and bound from valleyalley.com. This is all machine language material. It's all available online. 
Um, if you're interested in programming the AstroCAD in any way, you might want to maybe check it out at least in the PDF formats. But what's in here is a Z80 mini course, um, the Machine Language Manager and User Manual, the Goldfish Demo Source Code, uh, Machine Language Programming for the Arcade Bare Bones Basic Only, which is about three pages, but it's pretty interesting what you'd have to go through in order to print out from a basic, or excuse me, code in machine language in basic. Then there's the Bally Basic Hacker's Guide from the original version, which I think came out in like 79. It's written by Jay Fenton. Um, then we have the Bally Basic Hacker's Guide for the Astro Basic version, which uh, came out in like 81. And it t tells a little bit about how to uh, do some machine language stuff, but mostly it's uh, not. And then there's something I wrote myself and I po posted on Bally Alley, which is how to convert hexadecimal and decimal numbers to Bally Basic, which is um, they're very, it's very different from using other basics and it's kind of a pain to do. But I'm gonna flip through this real quick, give you an idea of what you got in here. This is something, it's only available at what you're looking at, it's the only one, it's the only copy. The Z80 mini course um, is uh, how to program in Z80 um, from Bally Basic, the original Basic. There's actually all the code and stuff that's for this is available online. You can load it. I might actually go through this manual sometime and uh, show the example programs because they're written in basic and machine language, the hybrid programs. And I'll show you here. Um, I'm getting a little off the subject, but it's still machine language related, so I will show you. So this would be the side that's basic, and this would be the machine language. Uh, not like it's probably useful to uh, people watching this video, but we'll get past all this here in a second. I just, uh, I find it interesting that people are programming the, uh, the AstroCAD using available hardware and software to them back then that, um, and they wasn't like a 2600 Intellivision or something. And I've said that in some other videos I've made. Um, this, this, again, this again is the machine language monitor cartridge from a manual. And for this we have um, the source code for the uh, Goldfish demo, the Valley Basic Hacker's Guide, which is uh, pretty neat and a lot of stuff that wasn't available in the Astro Basic and Valley Basic manual uh, was in this, and so it taught you how to use some things. Like, for instance, here, it tells you how to hook up a printer, and there's the hardware that tells you how to even do it. So, it's um, like, you take your Valley Basic 300 part interface, and you hack it up, modify it. Here's the schematics, here's the board layout, and here's the parts you need, and that tells you how to do that. The Astro Basic version, basically tells you some of the changes. There's quite a bit of changes between Bally Basic and Astro Basic, even though um, nearly all Bally Basic version programs will run in Astro Basic, but the reverse is not true because Astro Basic has some additional features. Let's see what else. The final thing here is we have a three or four page document that I wrote in uh, 2013 on how to convert to and from Bally Basic hex, decimal, and decimal. Chapter 1, the introduction to the machine language manager cartridge, suggests if you really want to delve into machine language programming that you buy a few different books, or at least one book. Uh, he also recommends just going to the bookstore, which at the time you could do, and just look through the stacks of Z80 books and see which one you prefer. He recommended four of them. I only I have uh, three of them. Uh, he recommends programming the Z80 by Rodney Zacks. This is the third edition, the last edition that was made. Um, a lot of people still use this even to this day, and it's 2018. People swear by this book. The Z80 Software Gourmet Guide and Cookbook. This was published in like 1979 or 1980. Um, I think it's okay. I like that it's uh, got a whole bunch of different um, subroutines that you can use. And then this, which is you can't really program the AstroCAD easily without this book. This is a copy that I printed off of BallyAlley.com. I did scan it in, and now I'm going to show you that here in a minute. First, I want to uh, show you some other parts of these books a little bit up close. This is the first book that is recommended um, for the Machine Language Manager cartridge, Programming the Z80 uh, by Rodney Zacks. Um, if you get a chance, you should listen to an interview that was done by the Antic Podcast with Rodney Zacks, um, I think in 2017 or 2018. It's worth a listen. He talks about how we founded a, a company that published all these kinds of books, like 6502 books back in the uh, the late 70s. So this book is about 600 pages. It's uh, not for the faint of heart. This book and a couple others are probably all you really ever need to program in uh, Z80. You don't need them all. Um, I have so many Z80 books and other programming books, but really 
if you just want to learn, um, you can probably find stuff on the internet, but learning from a book is, I think, easier because they go by examples and stuff like that. I'm going to flip through this. Um, it's, uh, it explains how the CPU works and from a hardware point of view. Uh, yeah, that's the other thing. This one's got a lot of hardware in it and you can probably program um, the Z80 without knowing as much as it's pushed here. Um, but part of this book is got a really great reference. It's chapter four, I think. But it takes up a good portion of the book. Um, like, hmm, as we can see, it takes up about that much of the book. Like, and it's right in the middle, so you'd think it'd be at the back. So I had a cure for this. Uh, like a few years ago, I went and did this. I, uh, I'll get this out of the way. This is the same exact book. I cut it up, um, or took off the, the side binding, uh, and I took uh, chapters, I extracted chapter 4, which is from pages 154 to 437, and I put it here, and then the rest of the book in order, and how it looks a lot thinner, um, explains how to program the Z80, and um, if you want to use this for reference, you can have them both available at the same time. So next I'm going to show a couple of the other books that he wanted, that he mentions. This is one of the other books that's recommended um, by Andy Guevara for use with Machine Language Manager. This book is uh, called Z80 Software Gourmet Guide and Cookbook, and it's by Nat Wadsworth. Um, I like this one. It's mostly from a software point of view, and it's called a cookbook because it gives tons of routines on how to program in Z80. Or not even how to program, really. I mean, it does explain how to program, but like, let's say you, here, look at the table of contents. Let's say you want some floating point routines, it's just the whole bunch you can just take. One of the reasons I like this book, because it was published in 1979, is chapter 9 on page 257 has something that very few books of this era have. It is a game. Um, it's assuming that you're programming on a Z80 system like a CPM machine, and um, you only have a text display. But it shows you how to program kind of a a limited version of, not Star Trek, but I'll show you a quick example of what you do. This, um, let's see, this ship can move around, and you've got to make it so it can't move anymore. And that's it. And just ask you what do you want to do. And it, you know, has a breakdown of how to do that. I don't want to get too much into that. I'm going to show you one last book, and then we'll get into how the program works. And I'll show you some examples uh, of programs that run from the Machine Language Manager. This is the Bible for the Astrocade. It's called the Software and Hardware uh, for the Ballet Arcade, a Technical Description. It was written by Dave Nutting Associates. And this is just a copy that I made and bound. It's nice and easy to use. Uh, <clears throat> when you would get this from the Arcadian, you actually got a photocopy of this and the source code for the, the AK of source code, which is about 400 pages, something like that, of what was available um, and how exactly how the um, subroutines and the games and everything inside the Astrocade worked. This explains all the routines that are included in the Astrocade. Actually, I take that back. It explains most of them. Um, some of them aren't talked about in here, and they probably because they didn't think you should use them, but you could still use some of them anyway. But <clears throat> there are no sprites or player missiles or anything like that in the Astrocade. What there is, though, um, are ways to move um, patterns around, which you might think of the sprites, but they're bitmap only, um, so they destroy the background. Um, and there's all the movements and things like that to explain how to, uh, to pro well, not how to program, it explains how to call the routines and uh, use them properly. And you can do that from the Machine Language Manager. I'm going to give you an example here. I'll just go randomly down. Um, we will go to Write Pattern. So on page 23, we go to Write Pattern. Page 24, page 23, screen write. And so this uh, book is broken up into sections, screen write, write pattern. So what you do is you call it using this setup, and when you were done, it would automatically write a pattern that you've predefined to the screen. So if you had a little uh, stick figure, you wanted it to be written to the screen, then you would use this. Um, this routine was actually used by some people who programmed games in BASIC. So they would have 
this very short machine language piece of code that their basic program would load and call, and then they would be able to write something to the screen. If the, since they were doing it in basic, it usually, um, or they it would make the kind of, people would call it blinky graphics, but it was better than we had otherwise in basic, which was n really no way to move patterns around. So that's all I'm gonna show you. Um, well, I'm gonna show you one other thing. Uh, man, I guess uh, this is gonna be more about the program the educator, some of the information you need, than it is just using the, soft, uh, the machine language manager, but that's okay, because as far as I know, there's no other video that shows you that. This is the Z80 CPU Instant Reference Guide. I bought this in about 2001. I was a bit really surprised it was still available on Amazon.com for like 10 bucks. Um, it's made of hard plastic, and it, at the time I was using it almost exclusively because I was hand disassembling stuff, which thinking back, that's pretty pretty crazy that I was doing that. Um, but it's just a front and a back piece of uh, plastic that's easy to use as a reference. I mean, once you get to know the Z80 chipset, um, you can actually look stuff up on here. Like, I want to do a quick zoom in. Maybe I'll try to show this a little bit better or some other way, but... Um, like, let's say you have a, a load here, which you can't really see. This is a terrible way to do this, but um, get yourself one of these. I mean, you probably are not going to be able to find one, so what can you do instead? Of course, this is available on valleyla.com. Find it, print it out in color, and uh, maybe laminate it, and you will have a really easy way to be able to uh, reference the Z80 opcodes. So you find yourself interested in programming using the machine language manager. You don't have this cartridge. What are you gonna do? You're not gonna be able to find it easily. Uh, I've never even seen one up for sale. Um, but there are other options. Um, of course, you do need the keypad overlay. So um, you can make one yourself, and I'm gonna show you that exactly. So first, let's show you what option number one is. And probably your only option, unless you burn your own EEPROM, is you buy an extra key multi-cart. This one is the latest version of the Ulti Multi that Ken Lil produces, or produced, I think he's, might have at least paused making it for right now, but that only brings you halfway there. Um, you can make your own overlay, because uh, this one doesn't come with it, so that's what I did. I made an overlay, and it looks like this. So, get rid of this, boot it out of there, and right there, now you'll be able to use the Machine Language Manager without a problem. I will compare the overlays for you right now. Let's move this one out of there. I'll put this in here, and they work just fine. Um, the Machine Language Manager original overlay has keypads or um, 24 holes for each uh, 24 keys of the 24 keys. Mine is a little less complicated than that. I just made six holes, six squares, uh, rectangles actually, um, and I just cut out the middles, and it works fine. I can place it over my keypad without a problem. If you print it out in color, you can have color, but you don't need it. Um, so there you are. Um, maybe you can get up and running and try using the Machine Language Manager. Um, if there's, if you have even the faintest interest in Machine Language, this is an interesting way to um, play around with it. I've used it uh, recently to uh, just check some code on real hardware. That's all I'm going to cover in this first video for the Machine Language Manager cartridge. What you're looking at here is a final picture of the MLM in action. This is a, actually a screenshot of a video I've already shot. I've already completed shooting all of the tutorial on how to use the MLM. But this is, uh, I'm gonna maybe whet your appetite a little bit. So this is the beginning screen, but I start using the uh, Machine Language Manager. Uh, I type in a program here. I look at the registers. I um, examine them. I can put information into them and what I actually do here is I do a copy. So I copy from one register for I copy from one area of memory to another. So where you see 2000, uh, that's the beginning of the machine language manager cartridge. This is probably all Greek to you. It might not make any sense. The uh, 6000 is the beginning of the area of RAM on the blue RAM uh, hardware expansion that gives me 16K of RAM. And what I do is uh, in this example that you can see later in the next video is I copy from the cartridge into the RAM, and then I run the Machine Language Manager from the RAM expansion. Uh, it's a really neat way to show some of the capabilities of this cartridge. Uh, this Machine Language Monitor is 
it's basic, but it uh, gets the job done. And uh, trying to do any of these things that are done easily from the machine language manager is much more difficult to do from basic uh, way. I mean, this makes your job so much easier. And plus, um, you get to mess around um, in the machine language world of opcodes, which is ultimately what uh, you are doing with an assembler anyway. You're just taking your source code, making it into opcodes, which you then place onto a cartridge and run from there. This sort of uh, makes it a little more difficult, but you need to know this stuff if you want to learn assembly. So why not start here? And you'll be able to do that with ease starting in the next video. Hope to see you there.